venerable religious, dear parishioners, this incident on the Sea of Galilee is very emblematic of our lives here on earth. <clears throat> Sometimes the sea of life is calm. Sometimes there's a storm. Sometimes the storm is so bad that it seems that all hope is lost. And then we run to our Lord. Lord, save us. We are perishing. It's not sinful to make that prayer, but we have to be reminded of what our Lord's response was. Did he say, it's a good thing you woke me up? By the way, how can a person be that tired? Where everyone else on the boat thinks they're ready to be uh, bashed to pieces by the, the storm, and yet there is Jesus asleep. I've mentioned this before. I remember one time on, on a little plane ride that I had from Denver to Colorado it was so bad that I thought I was thinking that you know we're we're we're, get, we're not going to survive, and it was so bad that I I'm sure I wasn't the only person with the air sickness bag ready to use. It was so it was like a bucking horse. And on that little plane trip, I saw an Air Force cadet who was totally asleep. He must have gotten off of his survival training. Maybe he had been up for three days straight. And no, as bad as this plane flight was, there he was asleep. Slept through it all. And our Lord was so tired out from his labors his sacrificial uh, giving to people that he could literally sleep through this horrible storm that the apostles thought was going to bring an end to their lives. But what does Jesus say? O ye of little faith. Right now there's a storm going on in our country. one of the most extremely polarizing times that we've seen. We've seen, and of course, such a great decline in morality and true religion. Ruination of the family as a unit, the destruction of the family, and we run to our Lord Jesus, save us. We are perishing. And it's good that we run to him. But how often will we hear that response, or might hear that response, O ye of little faith? One of the most difficult things to understand in life is why God lets certain bad things happen. If it were up to us, we wouldn't allow those things, would we? And we know that God can never will anything that is sinful in any way. But here's the mystery. Why does God allow so many bad things to happen? We won't be able to understand it all. No more than the apostles could answer the question, why is this horrible storm going on right now with Jesus asleep in the boat? Why is it happening? But that's just our puny minds. Remember, they will always be puny, no matter how smart a person may be. It's so puny compared to the infinite intellect and mind of God. We have to trust God. We know that he cannot will evil in any way, but he certainly allows it. And he has the power to bring good out of evil. St. Augustine explains this so well. He gave us such a thorough and beautiful explanation 
on the whole problem of evil. But no matter what that evil may be, whatever the danger, whatever the storm, remember this, that if you're with Jesus, you're going to be all right. You may have to suffer a great deal, have, go through great anxiety, but you're going to be all right. That's the lesson that Jesus was teaching the apostles. That's why he had to rebuke their lack of faith. And it does boil down to that, doesn't it? Our faith is weak. And it does take storms to help us to grow in faith. Faith doesn't grow when it's easy, when things are going smoothly. It's when they're difficult and we make that act of faith, that act of trust, that act of obedience, that act of love. That's where we really grow. And here's another reason for the storms of life. Without storms, things get stagnant. The storm brings about good for that lake, that pond, that otherwise wouldn't happen. Interesting that the Latin word for pond is stagnum. Stagnum. And we get the word stagnate from that. So often a little pond that doesn't get any winds blowing it, you know, causing the disturbance in the water, it stagnates. A lot of the fish life just dies out. The, I mean, there's, there's other life forms, but they're not often enough healthy. And this relates to our spiritual life. One of our great inclinations as human beings is it not to be comfortable. You know, have things go smoothly. What's the problem with being comfortable? Comfortable is the enemy of fervor, you see. And for our own good, God allows the storms to hit us so that our souls do not be stagnating ponds where the spiritual life gets slowed down, choked, snuffed out. God knows how to bring good out of bad. And again, the storms of life, and these could be various things, could be physical it can be emotional, it can be temporal, it can be spiritual, it could be disasters of life even. Again, God never wills, I know I'm repeating that, but I think it needs to be repeated, God never wills moral evil. He can't, but he most certainly allows it. And for our own good, he wants to whip up the stagnant waters that just by nature tend to be there. As Christians, as Catholics, we are called to fervor. We reflected on this on All Saints Day. The call to holiness that we all have. Yes, priests and religious, especially because of their life of religious profession, but all are invited, commanded to be holy to be perfect. And again, being comfortable doesn't go well with striving and being fervent, does it? So God in his wisdom knows how to rouse us to be fervent. And that's, I think, the lesson for today in the gospel of the storm. We spent a lot of time in the last three days with Jesus didn't we not? All Saints Day, All Souls Day. You spent a lot of time, you probably spent hours doing the visits for the Holy Souls. Went to First Saturday Mass. We were with Jesus. 
And when we say, Lord, save us, and we should say that very often, we do need that help, but let it not be with a lack of faith, but rather knowing that if we are with him and with our Blessed Mother, all will be well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.